Ashley asked me if I'd write her a song, so I wrote her a song for her awesome show. Her show is cool and it's lots of fun, so get your popcorn ready, everyone. Who will she interview on her show today? The Jonas Brothers or Nick Lachey? It's the Awesome Ashley Show. Hi, welcome to the Awesome Ashley Show. Today I have two very special guests. Um, Perrin Carpentier and Greg, Craig, Craig, Craig. Um, from the Bitterford Succo Transit. Yep. Um, they're going to talk about the new upcoming um, changes that are going to happen. So, hi guys, how are you? Good. How are you? Thank you for having yeah. us. Who wants to start first? I think I'll let Craig start. Okay. So, we'd like to go back in time just a little bit. And some of the first changes that we implemented were to move all of our buses over to the Saco Transportation Center. August 1st, we implemented new routes, and we thought it would be beneficial for people if we ran all the buses through the Saco Transportation Center. So all the buses come and go out of there every 75 minutes. So it gives people a really nice place if you're in Old Orchard and you want to go to Market Basket in Biddeford, you take the uh, blue line, you come to the transportation center, you swap and go on the black and orange line. And so it gives everybody a central location to operate. Um, we used to have local routes and we enhanced them. Um, we had some hiccups. <laughs> we, we expanded routes into places where we weren't picking up any people and we also um, we needed to get people to work in Portland and so we had to kind of readjust some of the schedules but we think we have it down pretty well now. Mm -hmm. um, our routes are named after colors to oh, try to keep it. That's cool. Yeah we tried to keep it local so bit of it is black and orange, Old Orchard is blue and white and um, Saco is maroon and the UNE bus is yellow, and then we still run our um, Turnpike Express, and that's called Zoom, but we also represent that with purple. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so we moved three of us over to the Saco Transportation Center. We have a customer service person, we have a bus driver supervisor, and I'm there. So it gives us a better physical pres presence to work with our customers, and with our bus drivers. Um, the transportation center gives the bus drivers a really nice place to come off and take a break, mm -hmm. use the bathroom, come get a cup of coffee. And if there's ever any issues, customers and bus drivers can come in and talk to us. Right. So it's gr it was a really good move. It's also a centrally located place for people to purchase their passes yep. or get questions answered in between the routes because there is a, um, a set amount of time for that layover process mm -hmm. so that people aren't running to go from mm -hmm. one bus to another. They actually have time. And it also provides a safe, warm environment yeah. for those people to yeah. go. But the customer service part of it is the best feature. Yeah. Okay, I know the uh, uh, answer to this question, but can people that are in wheelchairs take the bus also? Absolutely. <laughs> All our buses are ADA compliant, as well as we have bike ramps on the front of them. Um, so the buses all kneel so that those that um, have a harder time stepping up on the steps, the bus can be kneeled down closer to the ground so those steps are easier. But yes, all our buses are wheelchair accessible. There's a ramp that you get on, they up, lift you up into the bus, and then they securely fasten you down to, um, to for your safety as well as everybody else's. And we can carry two wheelchairs on every bus. Yes. That's cool. Yep. And I think you guys like lift up the seat like because it hides make, the thing and then to make room yep. yeah yes and yeah so and then you have straps obviously yep yes and so. all our bus drivers are trained to use them and make sure that you're safe and sound nice yep um and i like the fact that you can go to hannaford and get like the free passes mm. those are so convenient because that's what i use because my my friend adam works at walmart so he has i think it's like a 50 dollar um pass for the month 
So he's got one of those. Yeah, yeah. so right now the monthly passes are $30 or $25 for those 65 years of age and older, those with disabilities, um, and also students. Um, and or you can pay as you go. Um, so yes, the passes are great, but for those that um, would like to get free passes, if they go to Hannaford, they p purchase their groceries, they do need to ask the cashier for their two free passes. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good feature as well. And then how much does it, how much do they charge if you don't have the passes? I think it's like a dollar or something. It's a dollar fifty um, for, uh, residents and then uh, if you're a senior citizen or if you're disabled or a student it's 75 cents but that's going to change a little bit so i'm going to let craig talk about our new fare system and upcoming changes to the fares so um another big change was we have a new executive director um, tony scavuzzo was hired he's a biddeford resident and uh, he comes from a background of mapping so in the new cars, when you have your map on the screen on your dashboard. Or the, like the GPS. GPS. Thing. Yes. Yep. His, the company he worked for created all those maps. Nice. So he's brought some more technology to our um, organization. Well, that's good. As we were talking before the tape started rolling, um, we used to be referred to as shuttle bus zoom. Yeah, that's why I didn't know yeah. that happened, which way to pronounce you guys. And all of us got together and many people called us many different things. So we were the Zoom bus, we were the shuttle bus, we were shuttle bus Zoom, we were Zoom shuttle bus. And so nobody, it, it, was, it was very complicated. Yep. So we decided that we wanted to go back to our roots, that we're a public bus transportation system. And so we went back to Biddeford Saco Old Orchard Beach Transit. Um, initially, we keep saying it over and over so that people can get used to it. But hopefully at some point, they're just going to refer to us as transit, like they do with Portland Metro, yep. they're the Metro bus. Um, we've designed a new logo. Um, we wanted to go back again to show people that we're a bus system. So we have a very basic logo that highlights the word transit and has a bus on it. So there's no doubt that that's what we do. And I think our new focus really has been um, we want our organization to be better known. Uh, we want people to understand that we offer wonderful service in our communities. We can get you to Portland. We service South Port part of South Portland and Scarborough. And so we're pretty much a one-stop shop. And um, we all agreed that we weren't doing a very good job of talking about what we did. And so we've kind of reorganized a little bit. That's become more of a focus. Um, we just, I think I can officially say we launched the website. It's live. It's um, yeah, so we, a couple of days ago, we just walked through it. It's live. It's, you know, we're still making some corrections to it, but it's um, much more user-friendly. The schedules were on there. Um, oh, so if people want to see the schedules. Yeah. Um, yep. There's, yeah. um, there's several drop-down tabs that you can look at for different things. If you want to have information about the fares, if you want to have information about um, how to, the conduct for riding the bus. Mm -hmm. um, most of our policies and procedures you can look. Um, we've also added some of the mobility management aspect of it so that people, um, if they need assistance in riding the bus and if they have any fears and they mm -hmm. want to ride the bus. Mm -hmm. um, so as part of my job as mobility manager, um, we go, we're available to go out and talk to you individually or as a group. We'll work with you one-on-one -on, -one on, on riding the bus. And um, we're going to be offering, as part of that, we're going to be offering monthly meetings at the Saco Transportation Center. Nice. Um, we're working and tweaking on the schedule, but every month we're going to have some topic of discussion at the Transportation Center. And the reason we're doing it at the Transportation Center is because that's where all the buses yeah. come in. Yep. And um, especially with all the new things, and um, we're going to have fare increases, and that will tie into what Craig's going to explain about the new fare boxes too. Yeah, so again, bringing more technology to the table. Um, all our buses are being outfitted with GPS units, so mm -hmm. you can download an app and it'll show you where the bus is on, on, your phone, right? on the phone. Yeah. Um, 
We will have big screen TVs in the transportation center that will show where the buses are at all times. Um, and the big thing is, is that we've been working with Portland Metro, South Portland Bus Service, and us all together. We're implementing a one-stop electronic fare box system. So if you use your phone, you can download an app. You can load money onto the app. Mm -hmm. And when you go on the bus, you just put your phone up to the machine and it... Oh, it's like those credit card things. Exactly. Phone, yeah. right. um, for people who don't have phones, we, you can come in and purchase a loadable card. Yep. It's going to be called the Dirigo card. And um, you can put as many amount of money on it as you want and it'll just draw down every time you go on the bus that's cool mm. yeah and so we're getting ready we're almost ready to try it we have our first bus that has Wi-Fi on it all the buses will have be outfitted with Wi-Fi oh lovely yeah. that's cool um, so you know we're trying to make it much more con consumer friendly and um, so the 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 real thing that drew us to this was when everybody looked at what we were supposed to be doing, which mm -hmm. was providing service to people who couldn't afford it, mm -hmm. um, we kept creating these, these mechanisms like, if you can buy a 10 ride pass, we can give you a discount. If you can buy a monthly pass, we can give you a bigger discount. Mm -hmm. So those people that had more disposable income we're getting a break, yeah. whereas people who didn't have disposable income lived day to day. They were buying their tickets every day and paying top price. So this new fare system, we're referring to it as a rewards program. So if you ride the bus X amount of times, and we'll determine how many times that is, right now it's looking like 15 round trips in a month. And how will you know that they, t like, Will they stamp the card or? Nope, it, all electronic. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll tell us where you got on the bus. Mm -hmm. It'll tell us that you're um, disabled or you're 65 or you're a student. It, it tell us all that information. Yep. And once you get to the limit that we've set, every ride after that will be free. That's awesome. Yeah. It is. So for someone that rides the bus every day, if they do 15, I think it's going to be 15 round trips in a month. That, I mean, you could do that in a week That's if, awesome. if you rode the bus a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if you uh, depend on the bus to give you a ride to work. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so that, that will groceries be. groceries or, you know. Yeah. So then you'll go on the bus. You'll put your phone or your card up against the thing. It'll still beep that you're getting on the bus. It'll still tell us who you, or not who you are but what category you're in and where you get on the bus, but it'll be free. That's awesome. Yeah. The other good thing is, so you come into our office, or maybe there will be some other locations you can go to, possibly a Hannaford or a, a Walgreens, where people typically go frequently. Yeah. You can put more money on the, the card that'll be like this. Yeah. And in the past, if you bought a 30-day pass and you didn't ride the bus to get to your thirty dollars, you lost that money. Yeah. Now, if you put thirty dollars on this card, that thirty dollars is there until you it's use it. It's still going to be on there. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so it will roll over every yeah. month. So if you still have twenty dollars on there, it rolls over to the next month. So you're not losing money. Yeah. Um, the rewards thing will be calendar month. Mm -hmm. So you just have to remember that the more you ride in the calendar month, the more you're going to get for free but the dollars will roll over into the next month. What made you guys decide for all these changes? I mean, they're awesome changes. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, I think the first step was talking to the other bus companies. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of, we're all trying to find money to operate. We're all trying to do the best for our customers. And so like, we may have a good idea that we've implemented, but we don't tell the others and vice versa. And so connecting all the systems together was our goal. We wanted to make sure that it, we don't care if you get on in Saco, Biddeford, South Portland, or Portland. It's all going to be the same. And so um, that was a big step. 
And then the more we talked, it got to what I said before was the very people that we were really trying to help, we were charging the most money. Yeah. And so this, this system had been implemented at other places in the United States. And so we said, well, why don't we do it? The, and like Craig said, the neat thing is, is before if you had to go from one service to another, you had to get a transfer slip or you'd get a discounted rate. So now with that app on your phone or the card, you can ride from the local bus onto the Portland Intercity or the Zoom into Portland, get on the Metro yeah. bus, take the Metro bus and get onto the South Portland bus and you're all using one app. You don't need separate passes no anymore. No pieces of paper well, for transfers. Yeah. We'll handle all that. Yeah, because paper, <laughs> you can lose your paper yeah. sometimes. And trust me, people do. And the nice thing is with a card too, a little bit, um, if you lose your card, as long as you go online and register your card with the app, um, and um, you, we can come in and we can cancel it for you and reissue another one. There'll be a small fee associated with it, um, but we're able to reissue it. Right now, yep. if you lose your monthly pass, yeah, you're out. we can't replace it because we have no way of tracking them. So it's like, it, there's so many great features to this. Um, the rewards program, just having a card, just having the app and you have control over loading that money in yourself. Um, and it works well for all because we have senior citizens riding our buses. We have those people with disabilities. We have people that um, need to get to work. Mm. We, we focus on workforce transportation yep. a lot. That's why some of our routes have changed to go into the industrial parks. So we're yeah, listening. That's where most people work. Yeah. Right. In and town. And yep. Stuff. So we, we've, one of the other things I keep, uh, like when you asked Craig about how we came about this, we also listen to our riders. Mm. We listen to you. I mean, if you if you have a suggestion and you have a concern, we listen to that, and and we meet once a week and we talk about those concerns, and that's how we base upon moving forward. Do you still do your? I think it was called the Angel Program. Or? So the Transit Angel Program is still going to stay the way it is. Um, I take. I, I think still, we talked about that last time you were We on did. Show. I receive donations from businesses and organizations in the area, and in turn, they get. Um, turned into passes that get distributed to organizations in need. So any business that wants is to that make a donation. Is that what the Angel Program's for? Mm -hmm. That's what the Transit Angel Program is for. It's helping those people that don't qualify for programs to get transportation to and from work, to school, to medical appointments, to shopping. Um, it's, yeah, that program is still going to stay. Hannaford, yeah, program Hannaford program will yeah. still stay. Yep. Um, so. In the, in the, um, Passes at Hannaford will still stay. That's right? still gonna stay. Yep. The only, the only, the all the other passes will eventually go away, and we're actually gonna have a grace period. That use your passes up by this time because they they will eventually all go away. But we are gonna have a grace period for those passes, like the Hannaford passes and the one ride passes that are out there now. Nice. That's a really good example of why we're having these monthly education sessions because people ask us those questions all the time. And so we're hoping that we can get people together, walk through it with them, get them to understand that, you know, hey, if you have some tokens in the draw or if you have a pass in the draw, go out and use There's it right now. Yep. Yep. Yeah, because I, I, I don't have, like, a monthly pass. I have, like, I get them at Hannaford and mm -hmm. stuff. So, because Adam got me into that. So. Yeah. Um, he's like, it's a great program. He's like, just go to Hannaford. And I'm like, Okay, so so, so let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I know the last time you and I had talked that you had some apprehensions about riding the bus, and now I've seen some selfies of <laughs> you and Adam riding <laughs> the bus. So how is it? It's pretty good. They're all nice to me, and, the, and they make sure I'm, I'm safe, safely on the bus. So before they before they take off, good. which is which is good for me uh, because I always want to make sure. That I'm safe, and you know that everybody else is mm -hmm. safe on the bus. You know, so it's good to know. And Adam's like, I won't leave your side. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you say it's okay. He's so. a good friend to have. That's really yes. good. That's good to hear too. That our, our bus drivers are helping you and making sh making you feel secure. Yes, and and Adam Adam is a big part of that too because he's like he he understood how like petrified I was at first, <laughs> but he's like, I'll go on with you. I promise. That's awesome. Yeah. So I get, you know, 
because Adam knows I'm trying to be independent, so. And that's what we try to do, and that's why we're Im implementing a lot of these programs. Like Craig said, those on the fixed income seem to be spending the most money versus those that are able to purchase the monthly passes. Mm -hmm. So it's all about helping people gain their independence and getting them where they need to go. I mean, mm -hmm. nowadays, high school students can't afford to take driver's ed. And once they do, if they can afford it, it's like buying a car, getting the insurance. So. This is why we encourage, you know, Well, it gives thing. me independence, too, because I don't always have to rely on Mom to give me rides. Absolutely. You know, so if I have to go to Walmart and Adam's with me, I'm like, let's take the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, we have our spokesperson. Uh, there you go. That's really good. <laughs> so a couple, of, a couple of more things that um, we recognize that our bus fleet is old. Um, you know, the organization struggled with financial issues. Um, it's very complicated getting money to run a bus system. And so recently, um, we've gotten some really good news. We have been approved to get two new coach buses, bigger, um, more comfortable, <coughs> that will be on our uh, Turnpike Express, nice. the Zoom bus. Um, those are, you know, probably 14, 15 months out but the state of Maine has also given us the authority to manage that money. Sometimes you have to go through the state, and it just takes a little bit it longer. It takes a long process mm -hmm. to go, because you have to go through all, cross all your T's exactly. and dot all your I's. So. Absolutely. So it was, a, it was a very strong statement that the state of Maine allowed us to manage that whole program. So we're specking those buses out, and we'll, you know, we'll get them soon. We received $800,000 to buy trolleys um, new that trolleys. was mm -hmm. new trolleys our trolleys are 20 years old and so imagine trying to fi find parts when a bus when a trolley breaks down it's very very costly yeah and a lot of times it takes they're old and they don't make they don't make that I know um, we sent to uh, Great Britain for pots really? one time. yeah so we'll get four new trolleys right and we have put in for funding for four more. Mm -hmm. And then the mo what I think is one of the more exciting things is that we'll, we will be partnering with Portland Metro and both of us are getting two new electric buses. And so we will have the first electric buses in the state of Maine and all the infrastructure that goes with it. So our facility at Pomelo will have charging units so we can plug the buses in overnight and at the Saco Transportation Center, we will build what they call a fast charging station where the bus can pull in, go under the charging station for 15 or 20 minutes and get fully charged again. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So those will be on the local routes and we'll spend some time testing them. We're hoping we get them in the wintertime. That's our goal is we want to get them by next winter or, yep. the, or maybe a little bit beyond so that because they're battery operated, you know, a day like today when it was 15 degrees, yeah. we want to see how they're going to operate. Yeah. But they'll Good. all have all the all the new electronics on them, Wi-Fi. Yeah. Oh, you know. people are going to love that. Oh, it's going to be great. They are, and we do have Wi-Fi on some of our buses yep. now. And our goal is to, as we're improving them and doing the wiring for the electronic fare boxes, our drivers are going to have um, uh, pads that they can keep track of um, ridership. So. I know when you get on the bus, you notice that you have to either show your pass or you put your money in, yeah. and the drivers have to write all that down on a piece of paper. So they're going to have tablets on the buses where they can just um, hit, hit, hit the, button. Hit the yeah. button. But the other thing is with the electronic fare boxes, if you have an app on your phone or you buy one of those cards, yeah. it does it for them. Mm -hmm. They don't have to do anything. Yeah, anything. So we want our bus drivers driving the bus. We yeah. don't want them doing anything else <laughs> yeah. and helping you when you come right. on. Yeah. And that will alleviate some of the times that they're spending at the stops calculating that information. And, and stuff how, like, because like, they make so many stops, but how do they know that person wants to, like, I know the answer because I've been on the bus. Mm -hmm. But how, like, do they have, like, a string they pull down? Like, if, like they want to stop at Walmart and, like, you know, 
So there's two different features on our buses right now. There are um, fluorescent colored strips. Yeah, yellow. You just, yellow, you just hit your yeah. hand on them and it notifies the driver that you want to stop. And then some of the older buses do have the strings that you pull. Yeah. And same thing with the trolleys. Um, and it alerts the driver. It sends a message in front of the driver that someone wants to exit the bus. Mm -hmm. It's, an, it's a, a subtle change that we've um, been getting to. We were trying to be so accommodating that we were stopping everywhere. And again, yep. going back to our old buses, and Perry Ann was telling you how we can kneel the buses. Yep. Well, that is a whole compressor system that makes the bus go up and down. And we were stopping every 50 feet. And so our buses were breaking because we were using it so frequently. And so we've implemented a bus stop sign system. And we ha I'd, I'd say it was probably about 80% complete. Um, we have stickers that we've put on the signs that tell you what color the bus line is that stops at that bus stop. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And um, so we're trying to make it so that more people will walk to the sign where the bus stop is. We're trying to place them closer to crosswalks and make things much more safe. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, so far so good. The the bus drivers like it better because you know you don't just get going and somebody's a stand on the side of the road waving at you. We will still pick you up. We, yeah. we just are encouraging people to get to a stop. Yeah. Um, at a stop sign. Yeah. You know, think about that big bus is going down Elm Street in Biddeford, and every time it stops, it blocks traffic. Yeah. And, you know, again, we're trying to make sure our people are safe. So it seems to be working better. Um, going back to what I told you in the first place, so we got a bunch of signs up, and then we changed the route. <laughs> and so now we got to go out and take the signs down. Um, and put, the, put those signs at the new route? Yeah. Then so, but it, in general, it's working much better. And people are starting to understand. We don't make you walk, you know, three quarters of a mile to a bus stop, um, but we do encourage you to, you know, you have a better chance of not being missed right. yep. if you're at the bus if you stop. stop at the bus, and you'll be yeah. able to track it. So we're working on a mm -hmm. GPS pr um, app also. We've got a lot of new apps and yep. programs and stuff coming out, little bells and whistles for us. But we're going to have an app that you can actually see where the bus is. And you can click on the route, it will show you where the bus is, and then there's a little tab on the side that if you click on that, it gives you a list of all the times that the bus is going to be. Now, do, the they come, do, they come, do the buses come around like every hour or it's two hours? 75 minutes. 75 yeah. minutes. Yeah. And, there, and we used to be hourly, and we added some extra time in there because we found that during the summer season and during construction and bad weather that the drivers were having to hurry up and to catch up. Mm. Um, the other feature with that, it gives them time. So now all the buses meet at the Saco Transportation Center. So they're all there at the same mm. time. They all leave at the same time. And with that extra minutes in there, it gives them that time to get caught up. It gives them that time to get off the bus <coughs> and, and get a drink or a snack. Yep. It also gives our passengers time to run in and purchase a pass or add money on their card when we start that. Yep. Um, the other thing is it will help once we get to the electronic buses. It gives them that extra time to do a quick charge if they have to. So it's long-term goals when we went to the PULT system. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and so I know we talk about the app and we talk about the card. You still will be able to pay cash. Mm -hmm. We'll always be able to accept cash. And then we're probably the, the, the fourth way to pay will be you'll be able to come in and buy a one ride pass and that'll be more like a piece of paper and you'll be able to go it have a QR code and you'll be able to put push that up against the machine and it'll read that too um, we think that it gives people options mm -hmm. it um, it allows the people that are more technologically advanced to participate but you know God bless you. If you want to put cash in the box, we gladly accept it. <laughs> I think you guys should also um, like debit cards too, like because a lot of, there's a lot of places that take cash, but there's a lot of places that take debit card too. Yeah, so you'll be able to purchase your Dirigo card with a and debit card. Be, okay. Yeah. And that will be okay. the te the the technology on the bus can't differentiate between 
your debit card and her debit card, my credit card. So that's why we, we encourage you to come in and buy this Dare okay. Again card. And, and, yeah. and we'll really be encouraging people to sign up on um, and create <clears throat> an account because without the account, then we can't, if you lose your pass or it gets misplaced, we can't do anything about it unless you actually have an account. So we're really encouraging people. Yep. And the information that you put on the account is not gonna be shared. Um, that's one of the Can new things generic. that we have is um, we've developed a social media privacy policy. So any information you provide to us is for solely for our use and mm -hmm. providing you with transportation. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the the way to go is definitely sign up for it but we understand not everybody has a cell phone mm -hmm. um, so in that case if you purchase the card and it can be reloaded so you can always add more money to it um, but like Craig said there are some of our um, older population that chooses not to use either one of those so the cash is definitely mm -hmm. going to be accepted as well as the Hannaford cards and then the transit angel passes and for some of our you know, more business type people that are taking the Zoom bus to Portland who um, probably have the latest, greatest technology, um, they'll be able to set it up like the easy pass on the turnpike. Oh, that's cool. So it gets automatically that. renewed. They yep. don't have to mess with it. Uh, that's cool. They'll, you won't have to they'll worry attach about it to it. an account. And yeah. Yeah. That's what Should be really fun. It's win win for everybody. So does this start in August, you said? No, um, we're shooting for April. April. Yep. We think that we'll have some, well, we have the first bus that has GPS and Wi-Fi on it. Is that one running already? Yep. Or are you uh, Today they're riding all over the place to see if there's any gaps in the Wi-Fi service. Um, yeah. Once that one is passed and, and made sure that everything's working right, then the next step is to put the fare box on. Mm -hmm. And um, we have some training scheduled and things like that. But we're hoping that somewhere around April that we begin working it all the time, try, you know, having people like you try it. Um, I'll definitely be a guinea pig. Yeah, no, it's, I think you'll find it that it's great. Especially where you, you know, you have your phone everywhere we go, just like the majority of us yeah. do. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so easy, and even the app to track the bus is going to be on your phone, so mm -hmm. it's just your, your, I think you'll enjoy it. And I think people like Adam that um, with the monthly passes and that need the, his card will be reloadable. He can mm. set it up to reload automatically. Um, we are gonna offer um, some assistant programs with that. It may be a little different than um, you may have an actual application process to get discounts and mm. stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's, yeah, it's, People hear the word change and they kind of panic. And it's really, when you think about it and the more you talk about it and the more we learn about it, mm -hmm. it's actually the best thing that we can do for folks like you that ride the bus. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. All these awesome changes. Awesome Wi Fi on the bus, too. That's like, yeah. everybody loves Wi Fi. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Especially if you're going to be on the bus for a half an hour or so, you can keep to your emails. I mean, the Zoom Turnpike Express has it already, and that way the mm -hmm. business folks can actually do work and stuff while they're riding on the bus. Does, do they charge extra when they take when you guys when they take them to the like the mall, like or is it the same? There will be different um, fees. Um, one thing that we're getting rid of right now is uh, the Portland Green Line zones. has three different zones, and you pay three different prices. We just find that very confusing. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, and, and we're getting rid of that. The ride to Portland will be $4. Doesn't matter where you get on, it's going to be $4. Um, the, the Zoom is $5. Yes. And, um, you know, again, that's an express route, so people have no problem. Paying $5 is better than trying to find a place to park and dealing with the traffic and all that kind of stuff. We're parking in the parking it's garages. It's $5 coming coming this way and going that go yeah, back. Well, so yeah. ten dollar round Each trip. Way. Yeah. But here again with the new cards and the app, you know, if you ride five days a week, yeah. you know, eventually you'll be riding for free. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Anything else you want the viewers to know? I think one of the basic things I want to let the viewers know is that, you know, 
there's been a lot of changes and I know a lot of them are frustrated but we appreciate your patience um, and understanding through all of us and that you know we do listen to your cares and concerns and we do um, take them very seriously and that anytime anybody has any questions I mean they can go to our website there's a page where they can send in a comment or a concern um, and we do discuss them on a regular basis um, and some of the your uh, suggestions we've actually implemented yeah, so I was gonna say two of the biggest problems we had were solved by customers mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah. yeah and it was great they, so they you, felt so confident really, telling us and we fixed it so you really do listen to your customers absolutely, absolutely. and without you guys and yeah. without the customers riding our buses you know we wouldn't have a bus service so the transit is um, trying to make it you know the way I look at it we're trying to make your lives easier and like you said perfectly get independence for those that need it yeah um, Perrin what made you want to become what you do like helping people or just exactly what you said I've always been a people person um, I enjoy working with people helping people um, being given the opportunity to be the mobility manager for the Bedford Soccer Old Orchard Beach Transit is it's something I look forward to doing every day I mean it's like today I'm going to speak to students at Thornton Academy other days I speak to uh, those that are visually impaired and you know it's just hearing the exciting stories and feeling you know the rewards of helping somebody I mean we've had people that have a fear of riding the bus and we've actually taken a bus at the Pomelo Street location parked it and did one-on-one -on -one training helping them practice getting on and off the bus mm -hmm. and now that person has been a faithful rider ever since so it's the things like that um, people that have um, language barriers we work with them mm -hmm. and that's another feature yeah. with those tablets is hopefully we'll be able to have some um, language apps, apps yeah. on there absolutely yeah. and our website now too um, the new website is you can go up on the top and you can change the language as quite a few of them that you can select from. I actually played game. with it the other day. It was fun to see the different <laughs> languages. Yeah. Don't know what I'm reading, but it was fun. Yeah. But no, we have a great staff. We have a great team. And teamwork is our biggest thing, and communication is a big thing. And um, I think it just makes it that much easier um, when we can work together. Same question for you. What made you want to become help? That's really interesting because I ran the Chamber of Commerce for eight and a half years and so I was involved in the public and I was on the board at um, Shuttle Bus and um, when Al Schutz was going to retire um, he started talking to me about would I be interested in coming over to work there and I was like no not a chance I have no interest <laughs> um, but then as it got closer to him retiring um, he made a really strong case that you know, my job now is basically doing what I was doing at the chamber, promoting the communities, promoting our organization, working with businesses, and um, so I took a chance. Uh, pretty outside my comfort range because I didn't really know anything about public transportation, um, but I really I've enjoyed it, and it, it's been a huge learning experience for sure. Well, it's good to have a learning experience, yeah. too. Absolutely. And that's one thing about our new executive director, Tony. Um, before he um, actually started working at Shuttle Bus, he was out there riding our buses, riding the trolleys and stuff mm -hmm. like that. He really, really did some great exploring. So he knew what he was getting into. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to trying the new system and uh, the new things you guys have set up for the buses. So Wonderful. Look forward to it. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. Ashley asked me if I'd write her a song, so I wrote her a song for her awesome show. Her show is cool and it's lots of fun, so get your puppy